A few months ago, my friend Casey issued a challenge on her blog. She decided to participate in the growing trend of not wearing makeup on Mondays, and she invited us all to join her. It was a simple thing, but it caught like wildfire. She was seen as inspired, almost like a Lady Moses leading her tribe through the desert of insecurity and competition towards the promised land of self-discovery and self-acceptance. Woman after woman joined in and shared her reflections on beauty and judgment and worth. It was a truly beautiful day, and I participated fully. But here's my dirty little secret. At the time, I thought the whole thing was a little bit ridiculous. Sure, the day before the challenge, I too felt terrified at the idea of leaving the house without makeup, because the idea of leaving the house without makeup is supposed to be a scary thing. But a walk past the full-length mirror in my house confirmed that I had bigger fish to fry. <laughs> the face staring back at me sported dark under-eye circles and pale lips set into a grimace of disapproval. To the north, hair that was washed two, three days ago, and to the south, a gnarly t-shirt from a race I had run six years prior, the hint of formerly nice breasts squashed into submission by an ill-fitting sports bra beneath. Maternity, Capri, yoga pants hiding, do I really need to confess it? Granny panties, <laughs> white athletic socks, and Lord have mercy, Mary Jane style traveling shoes from a trip we took to Europe in 2009. <laughs> it hit me like a ton of bricks. There is no challenge involved, and I'm wearing white socks with Capri pants and Mary Jane's? <laughs> What the hell has happened to me? And so I texted my best mom friend on the sly. No makeup Monday? Isn't that just called Monday? <laughs> Maybe we should start our own thing for a challenge. How about make an effort Monday instead? <laughs> Becoming a mother changed me in so many good ways, but I had to face the fact that it had changed me in a very bad way, too. It's not like I was some sort of fashionista before I had kids, but I tried to look my best. So why had I stopped trying when I became a stay-at-home mother? I put on my anthropologist hat to try to justify this mess. Perhaps this was the result of the hamster wheel of responsibility I now found myself on. Feed the boys, wrestle the boys into clothes so that we could run late into preschool or Target. Feed the boys separate the boys while yelling, everyone needs to find their own space. And seriously, do the boys need to be fed again? <laughs> Not exactly a lot of me time in that schedule. Perhaps this was the physical manifestation of my life's true passion, to open up dialogue about the difficulties of motherhood. After a crushing battle with postpartum depression, I made it my mission to let other moms know that it was okay if they didn't find the whole new mom thing to be all sunshine and rainbows, and that there was help if they needed it. Maybe my lack of self-care was like my own personal billboard that said, struggling? Talk to me about it. <laughs> Perhaps, even, it was my silent protest against the parade of Stepford wives I encountered in my new community. It seemed that everyone around me was hell-bent on showing everyone else that they had it all together all the time, starting with their perfectly coiffed hair, meticulous makeup, and well-accessorized outfits. At times, I knew that this was a facade. But more often than not, it felt like I was the target of an insidious campaign to make me feel inadequate and lonely. Yes, it was all of these things. But if I was being honest, it sounded more like this. What was once necessary for survival with a colicky newborn had become habit. The postpartum depression that gave me my passion for openness and motherhood also left me with some scars, especially deep ones that told me that I wasn't any good at this, that I wasn't any good in general. And moving to Pleasantville just compounded the problem. <laughs> Or maybe it was simply this. Somewhere along the way, I had lost my sense of self upon becoming a mother. So I didn't get ready for the day, for my life, because it seemed like wasted effort. 
And before I knew it, I was caught in a negative feedback loop of frump. I didn't get dressed, which made me not feel good about myself, which made me really not want to get dressed, which made me really not feel good about myself, and so on and so forth, until I felt like absolutely nothing. And I was wearing white socks with capri pants and Mary Janes. I call this rock bottom. <laughs> But my tongue-in-cheek challenge to my best friend changed all of that. Because the next day, I made an effort. I got up early, I took a shower, blow-dried my hair, and put on makeup. I grabbed some clothes, nothing fancy, but nothing with an elastic waist either, and I got dressed. And it felt good. So I did it again, and things changed. I started to feel better about myself as a woman, my own being, separate from my roles and my responsibilities, deserving of the effort. I started to feel less intimidated by the women around me, and I started to feel better about myself as a mother, too. So this year, when you see me put together, you know, real clothes, clean-ish hair, makeup on, don't think me unapproachable. It's not that I have somewhere fabulous to go. I'm still just running late to preschool drop-off. Thank you.